Welcome back. It's time now for our community update with Appleton Police Chief Todd Thomas. Good to see you, Chief. Morning. All right, so first let's talk about the arrest your officers made recently. This guy uh, attacked an officer, then he fled on foot. This was just a really dangerous situation. Right, yeah. We, unfortunately, this is, happens more frequently than people probably understand or know. Um, this was extremely dangerous. This is something our officers trained for. Uh, usually we're able to resolve most incidents uh, verbally and take people into to custody without this type of force. But again, we react, uh, our use of force policies, we follow the Constitution, state laws. You know, we react to the resistance that they provide. Um, this guy um, was, a, it was a violent fight. I watched a body cam video and mm. it's, uh, those officers, uh, at some point, they were fighting for their life. You know, we talk to our officers, every fight you get into, when somebody is assaulting you, uh, you bring a gun into that fight, it's your mm -hmm. gun. And we know if you lose your gun as a police officer, it will likely be used mm -hmm. against you. Um, so those officers did a great job watching the, the body cam video, extremely professional, mm -hmm. well-trained, uh, very proud of how they responded. All right, big salute to those guys. You know, no officers injured, that's the biggest thing, and he was uh, taken into custody safely. Uh, you know, we just showed a graphic. I want to pop it up again because you mentioned right. use of force. The preliminary numbers are out for 2019. Why don't you tell us about that? Sure, 2019, uh, fairly consistent with uh, 2018, which, we, uh, which had been a little bit of an uptick from the prior five years. It's something that we've seen uh, nationally. Um, people are more, a little more resistive. A uh, lot of discussion on why that is. Is it post-Ferguson? Um, we're dealing with people with a lot more mental health issues. Uh, the majority of force that we use, we use on people that are either intoxicated and resistive or have some mental health issues. Um, you know, but we, we do a report. It's posted on our website. Um, it's our 2018 is our most recent update. And when we use force, we know that with that, with that authority comes a lot of responsibility. So we want to be very open and transparent with how we use force. Mm -hmm. So this is about a 30 page document that's on our website and it spells out why we use force, the type of force we use. Um, you know, the reality is 99.9% .9 of the calls we respond to, we don't have to use force. Mm -hmm. Um, but when we do use force, we have to make sure that we do it so, as quickly and as safely uh, to everyone involved, the officers, the suspects, the community. So uh, I'd encourage people to take a look at that report if they have any questions at all on how we use force. And I want to apologize that graphic. I had a spelling mistake. I put that together. I used the wrong oh. van. Should have been T-H-A-N. <laughs> I'm weird about that, Chief. Forgive uh, But let's mention about being transparent with these uh, use of force right. numbers. Why do, you, why do you feel it's important the public knows that kind of information? Yeah, there's a lot of mis- information out there. Um, you know, people may think that officers are out uh, just depending on what news cycle you watch or what you see in the media because how it's played. Uh, use, uh, use of force happens frequently and officers are out there using batons and and uh, abusing their authority and it, that's absolutely incorrect. That uh, the, the truth is out of the, the 46,000 calls that we respond to in Appleton, and I know this is consistent across agencies in Northeast Wisconsin, um, 0.001% of the time we actually have to use force. And when we do have to make a physical arrest of somebody, um, it's around 2% of the time that we actually have to put our hands on them because they're resistive. Gotcha. So it is extremely rare that we have to do it. And when we do it, we look at every single report, we review it, we analyze it, and we use that data to determine how we train our officers to be better. All right, good stuff. Let's move forward uh, real quick with the truancy numbers in Appleton. 27% uh, of high school students were reported truant in the past semester. What is the police department? Are you involved with this in any yeah. way? That was, that was shocking um, when I saw that number, and I, I got a little more information yesterday from the school district. Uh, that, that number is actually, I, mean, I appreciate the school district putting that out and being as open and transparent as they are about that, uh, but they really are counting things they hadn't counted in the past. So like a, a, a student that is a tardy, that shows up two minutes late to class, that's being marked as an absent, mm -hmm. as, an, as an unexcused absence, which is different than how they had tracked it before. So you really got to, you know, I'm, I'm cautious about data, and when you put data out, you have to make sure you, you clearly define what data you're looking at. Uh, but it is something that we're concerned about. Um, you know, we, the school district and the school count, or city council made a decision last year to step back, have the police department step back from being involved in truancy as much as uh, we were in the past. Understandably why they did that. Um, we had concerns. We voiced our concerns. Um, I think the community needs to, to make sure that we stay on top of this issue and treat it with a, a sense of urgency because this is a... Every week a child is out of school, they become more disconnected. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't matter how many great programs a school district has, whether it's ours or someone else's, if the child isn't in school, they can't be part of those programs. You know, we, and we know that that, 
that truancy is truly the the pipeline to prison. Um, you know, we we've had discussions about pipeline to prisons and how truancy citations may have have increased that. Statistically, we have the data that shows that's not accurate. That you know, that it's not being in school. It actually is the pipeline to prison. So we got to make sure these kids get engaged. I know school district conversations we've had with them. They are very actively involved, trying to come up with uh, responses and and. Um, each, each child is a story. Each one has a different story on why they aren't coming to school, and that's, that's where the hard work is, and we just have to make sure as a community we all focus in on that. All right, Chief Thomas with the Alton mm -hmm. Police Department. Stay with Local 5 this morning. We'll be right back.